It was fun story time with Tim Hunter. And we're going to continue the fun with Julie Stewart Binks still on the Toronto sabbatical from uh, the uh, New York reporter from Fubo. How you doing, JSB? I'm doing great. It feels so good to be in Canada. I can't, uh, can't say that enough. It's just like you got off the plane, felt that clean air, felt just good people, people taking a pandemic seriously. Then I was shipped off to quarantine for two weeks, but now I'm I'm in my childhood room right now, as evidenced by uh, my my date from my formal about 100 years ago is still on my wall. So things haven't <laughs> changed much in God's country. Well, I can tell. Uh, well, everybody, everybody knows that you're living in uh, Manhattan. Costa, throw on the headphones there. Everybody wanted to tune in here for the JSB interview. A lot of people have been waiting <laughs> a long time for this interview. Too. Well... <laughs> Well, it's, uh, things must not be going so well over on the farm there, if that's what people are waiting for. No, so, no, 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 they are. Apologize. But I, I'm asking, I, I'm just curious for this, Julie. When you were coming into Canada, what did you have to tell the border officials, if any at all? Did you say, I'm coming home for a vacation? I'm from here? Like, as you probably know, Canadians going to the States have to prove, have documentation to say, I'm going for work. Like, you can't go for recreation into America. What was it like coming mm -hmm. home to Canada? Yeah, actually, I was pretty nervous ahead of it. And I just because I didn't know what to expect, because every border agent is clearly very different. So when I went, I had a lot prepared where you have to show where you're going to be quarantining. So I had an Airbnb that I decided to stay in for two weeks. So I had like it printed out. I also had you have to show that you're not going to go to a grocery store. So I the Airbnb actually helped me do this. But I had a receipt of food I had ordered from Instacart that was actually already in the Airbnb. Because, um, I mean, you could also just say you're go you're just going to eat Uber Eats, I guess, the entire time. But they don't. They want to make sure you don't go to a grocery store. I also showed that I had health insurance while I was here. Um, just like CIA travel insurance that I got, which really isn't that big a deal. But the fact that you can just show them that everything's buttoned up and they don't have to, like, worry about you being back. Because I don't have, I don't pay taxes in Canada. Shh, I mean, I don't live here. So that's obviously the reason why. But I did see, like, they just... I will tell you, they they want to make sure that like where you're quarantining isn't like your home so that you aren't going to go infect people like my my parents are over 65, so you can't quarantine with them. So they kind of like try to trip you up. I liken it to if you have a fake ID and you're trying to get into a bar and like the bouncer asks you a question about the ID and they're just try they're trying to trip you up. So that's kind of like what the border agent did to me. They're like, oh, so you're staying at your home. I'm like, oh, no, no, that's an Airbnb. Like, if I just said, yeah, I am, they'd be like, eh, you're not allowed to do that. Go back to America. But I will say, because you're Canadian, it was almost like, come to mama. Like, we welcome you in. We know things may have been a little bit difficult down in that, that burning basement that is going on right now. So it was all right. It was fine. The only thing that's a little odd is, like, they have everything planned out, minus the fact of, like, how do you get from the airport to the Airbnb, which is by an Uber. So like I asked the Uber driver, I'm like, do you feel weird right now? Cause like, I just came from America. He's like, yeah, but you got your temperature ch taken before you went on the plane. I'm like, yeah, but I was just in a plane like with other people. <laughs> so uh, it's not ideal, but I mean, it's, you just gotta be buttoned up. Like they're gonna ask you literally any single question and uh, people ahead of me, they grilled them. And then those people ended up going a different way than you're supposed to go so luckily like canada's taking it super seriously because you don't you don't want to spread it across the border so i was in quarantine for two weeks i went crazy but i'm already crazy so it was fine well <laughs> these guys do enjoy my uh, old time hockey stories and this isn't from on the ice but when i was in brandon very brief time with the Wheat Kings, went to a bar called Encounters with some guys by the name of Barry Dreger and Dwayne Caveman Newman. I was 16 years old. I had a fake ID from my friend in Milestone, Brent Renwick, just because in Manitoba, you only got to be 18. So we go into Encounters. These guys, by the way, were 20. And the bouncer says to me, Brent, huh? I'm like, yep. What's your birthday? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> You, Had my friend's you know ID. I didn't know, his, ride. didn't know his birthday. So, of course, I memorized it for years later and was never asked again. Um, so, Julie, let me ask you this. NFL kickoff is, I think, 25 days away. When you do go back to America, what's going to be the focus of your sports coverage here? 
when I go back to America? Well, honestly, Rod, first of all, it doesn't matter where I am because as we all know, everyone's just virtually right now. I've been able to do my show from home. So I did my show here this week with cousin Sal, who you guys may know from Jimmy Kimmel and he's on Fox Sports One. But I believe the, the, you know, it's, it's still the same discussion. It is right now it's college football because we're seeing so many of these big colleges now being going from home for the next two weeks, you know, Michigan State and Notre Dame, UNC. College football is bigger than the NFL in the States because of these these colleges are like corporations, right? They're they're bigger than anything. So that is gonna be that's the biggest thing right now is what happens with college football. NFL's I it's going to be starting on time. The expectation is that, you know, business is as usual. Um I was just talking with an, an NFL reporter in the States right now and she's like you know, everything's going ahead as, as, as is. And so I believe, as I've said before, maybe on the show, I think that the NFL will have sort of a, a reactionary response to what's going on because they're not in a bubble. I mean, we are seeing MLB figure out a way to sort of like trudge through this very unideal situation that they have going on. And then now we're looking at playoffs, maybe different number of games. And is there going to be a bubble? But <clears throat> Uh, you know, jokingly, we said this last time. I, and by the way, I'm very sorry there's no CFL right now. I, I was thinking about you. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going on a show where Rod just absolutely loves CFL. And I can't believe the NFL kind of jokingly is like, well, why don't we just go up there and, like, use use those stadiums instead, which is actually could be the best idea possible. But, um, yeah, right now, just talking with people, they're sort of like, this is we're going forward as normal. There's going to be a uh, – there would have been a massive revolt from Canadians if that was – the NFL was coming north. Just so you know, it wouldn't have flown. By the way, we've got a big fan of yours here. <laughs> Obviously, Darren and I are, but Costa Maragas, whose show launches tonight, by the way, in real time with Costa Maragas. You remember him from CBC, Julie. Costa, the floor is yours. What Hi. do you got for JSB? Anything? Julie, I'm so happy for your success. I'm really impressed. Congratulations, and I'm glad that everything's going well. I'm I am a fan. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. And I, so I and Casa, I'm a yeah. fan of yours too. I uh, I saw you were on the list today for guests, and I was like, man, <laughs> that guy's still alive. Like I remember him <laughs> back when I was in Saskatchewan. So uh, I know. I How does that make you feel? Out. Well, it's funny because I go into the supermarket and I do hear that whispered behind me. He's still around. <laughs> still alive. What the heck? Uh, you know. But yeah, I left CBC. It's been seven Sorry, years. I, I just uh, it I was lost been seven your years. Audio That's here. okay, Julie. Um, well, uh, we'll just can you yell at us when you can hear us back? <laughs> can you? I can't have a good comeback. But can you hear us? Can That's you hear okay. us? Okay. Yes, I got you, got you. There we go. Okay, so yeah. seven no, years I, he's been, been gone. I've been gone seven years from the airwaves. Did a lot of traveling and family time and all that kind of good stuff. And then when the pandemic hit, there's no more travel time for me. No more sailing in the Mediterranean and visiting family in Greece. So what am I going to do? I, I, I could hang out with Rod all day and go to the Four Seasons and have pizza, I suppose. <laughs> and Greek ribs. But, and Greek ribs. And that would be a good alternative. But when this uh, idea came to, to do an interview show on Facebook Live, I thought, why not? Why not? And it's been great. So our first show's tonight at 7 o'clock. So you have to tune in there. Uh, Julie, because because there's absolutely nothing to do in your world, I'm sure. <laughs> you're, you're pretty bored, right? That is awesome. I right, congratulations yeah. for Thank most you. people who have been laid off or their jobs have been cut during this time. You're able to come back and just, you know, wield your magic wand and, and <laughs> do the show. So as you deserve. So congratulations on the show and an interview show over or over Facebook like that's I mean, that's basically what I do. I do yeah. it with drinks, though. Do it. You, know. you know, I was thinking about yeah, doing an election show, an election night in Saskatchewan with drinks and special guests. Now, that would be fun. That's a good idea. These days, I think you need it. But, <laughs> yeah, would you need to be okay with that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But you, you remember the Four Seasons, uh, Four Seasons, of course. We watched the, the uh, exciting Super Bowl there. I believe it was the Baltimore-San Francisco power outage one, and it ended up being a great time. But uh, the one thing i got to tell you, and Costa, mm-hmm. it would be great advertisement for your show mm-hmm. here is you're interviewing Saskies abroad. Now, yes. Julie's in New York. She's not overseas, but similar right. thing. You're getting stories of pandemic stories. Yeah. So, I, Well, I thought, you know, sometimes, I mean, as concerning as pandemic numbers are in Saskatchewan, and you think about, 
you know, when those daily numbers come out by the government, and and, it, and, and if it if you hear about three or four reported cases in Regina, there's a bit of a concern factor. You feel it in the community, right? But it's also good, and that's concerning, don't get me wrong, but it's also good to get a bit of a perspective on where we sit compared to the world. So I thought, let's connect with some former Saskatchewan residents who make their homes in, in, in some COVID hotspots. So uh, I put the call out and notes to people, and I got an incredible response. Uh, and so we connect with a sixth-year medical student who's living in Lima, Peru. She's a U of R grad in uh, anthropology, makes her home in Peru. Wow. You know, in Peru, it's the medical system is stressed to the limits. I mean, we're talking about n- unable to keep up with the number of virus cases in Peru. And she's basically on the front lines of that. So we connect with her. We connect with uh, a former Regina resident living in southern Spain, where she was getting used to seeing military and police on the street, very aggressively pursuing citizens who are not staying indoors as they were required to do during the height of the closures. Uh, We connect with someone in London, England, who gives us a tour of London on what life is like in a pandemic world right now, which is really, it's it's changed. I have a student from U of R who is living in Saudi Arabia. They have sophisticated tracing apps there that'll blow you away that I'm sure Julie, you could probably speak to this with your experience living in the U.S. I can't imagine too many Americans liking to be tracked by the government. <laughs> <laughs> well, right? and, you know, but, and, and by the way, it's accepted in Saudi Arabia. Right. Well, well it's just, it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Julie's cost is saying three to four cases in Regina raises alarm. David in Winnipeg's written in and says a quarter million cases in New York. You probably got three, four on your floor in your apartment building, I would think, in Manhattan. Yeah, honestly, that's probably right. I would say New York, though, to its credit for a city that is not set up to be able to deal with a a viral infection, did do a a very good job with it. And I will say, though, the weird perspective I have is like coming back here to to Toronto, where it's 25 cases, right? Or there's, there's 125 cases in Ontario, something like that the other day. I still have the mentality of what it's like to live in the States. And... First of all, seeing people, a lot of people fight sort of doing the right thing and, and respecting other people. And then and then also the fact that like everyone wore a mask, like there's a mask mandate in New York City. So when I go for a walk with my mom, I'm like, wow, I can't believe no one's wearing a mask or we always bring I'm always like, let's bring our Purell. We bring hand wipes just in case we ha- would have to touch anything anyway. And I still have almost like, um, I carry a little bit of PTSD with me on it. Like, I'm not ready to be normal. I'm not ready to be like, all right, this is okay. This is cool. Because I still carry what I've seen. Uh, You know, New York City setting up morgues outside of hospitals. Like, it is going to be a lot for people to get back to feeling like this is okay to sort of have these things. And I will say, like, the one benefit of still being pretty intense on it for me is that it will then... Uh, you know, sort of, I guess, guard against a second wave. Like a lot of people sort of start to say, well, there's only 100 cases here. There's a 1,000 cases in New York City or there's this 10,000 deaths in Florida. Well, they're worse. It's like, I, this is another analogy I use. It's like, you know how um, they say you don't have to be, you don't have to be the, um, you don't have to outrun the bear. You just have to outrun the slowest person. <laughs> well, in this case, like the bear is going to get both of you. So it doesn't matter if you are better than the crazies in the States, it's like, this thing can still get you. So, uh, you know, much to my friends and family's detriment, I'm very intense on this, but I'd rather be intense on it than not. Well, enjoy the rest of your sabbatical, if that's what it is. We do have to let you go and we do have to break, but I'm glad I could bring you two together again. Right. So JSB, stay safe and Costa, good luck with your show today. What time? We're on at seven o'clock Saskatchewan time on Facebook Live. Perfect. Thank you. And you're going to be on the show tonight. That's right. In real time with Costa America. The show would not work without an appearance by Rob. <laughs> right. That's the Thank key you. to the Thank whole Thank you thing. so much. Oh. And I'm wearing shorts. Yes. Yeah, All by right, the Julie. King of Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah, we are, yeah, right. Okay. Thanks, stay guys. safe. See you later. Keep in stay touch. Safe. Thanks. Always appreciate the time. We'll be right back with a sports update and overtime coming up, too. It's the RP Show Facebook Live, Game Plus TV Network, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 